Hey everyone, it's Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be making a mixed media card. And if you know me, you know I love mixed media. Cards, scrapbook pages, canvases, like you name it, I'm all about the mixed media. So there's a lot of techniques that we're going to be doing using a lot of different products. And this is a quick look at the card that we'll be making today. You can see that there's a lot of cool things going on and I'm totally crazy about how it came out. And if you hang around till the end of the video, there's a bonus card too. So I hope that you'll hang out with me. And even if mixed media isn't your jam, you can always separate all of these techniques out and do one on one project, one on another. You don't have to combine them all if you don't want to. But if you do, even better because it's just so freeing and you get to play. So hang out, learn some things. And then if you decide to use any of these techniques, please feel free to tag me and show them to me because I'd really love to see them. So enjoy the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have a great day. We're gonna start off by making a couple of gel press prints and you can see I've got lots of paint on my desk. Kitsch Flamingo and Lost Shadow Distress Paint, Golden Fluid Acrylics in Teal. I've got Blick Matte Acrylic in Pink Light and a really old Heidi Swap Paint in Butterscotch. In addition to that, I've got some old pieces of cardboard. I love that kind of honeycomb cardboard and that torn piece I use all the time. Then I have one of the dies from the Everyday Foliage die set from Spellbinders and Simon Hurley. And now I'm just shaking up my distress paint. I've got my three by five plate there on a flat, small piece of acrylic. That just helps me move things around if I want to. And if I need to line anything up, I can do that easily. I put some Kitsch Flamingo on my plate and now I'm grabbing that really old butterscotch. You can't get that paint anymore, but I wanted to show you that you can really use anything you want no matter how old your paint is on the plate. I've got a six inch speedball brayer and I'm just brayering it out, but you can see that it's creating a lot of cells. It's not really giving me like a solid finish. I find that the distress paints tend to do that. I'm not sure if it's because they have less fillers in them or what it is, but I'm not really going for that look today. Typically I like having those cells. It's just not what I really want today. So that's why I had that pink light matte acrylic from Blick. I figured that that would kind of solidify that print that I'm going to be doing a little bit better than the distress paint. I love using distress paint in general, but on the plates, it's just not quite my favorite. Now I'm pressing that kind of honeycomb. I don't know what it's called. It's not corrugated. The other piece is corrugated, but that really cool piece of cardboard in there to get a really nice pattern. And I'm using the corrugated one now to kind of get some more impressions into that plate. I love using these together. They're two of my favorite things to make imprints with on my plate. They just, they always wind up looking cool. So now I'm going to sit that down and let it dry. It took a few minutes, but not too long. You can see that it's got a little bit of an eggshell sheen to it, but it's, it's dry at this point. So now I'm taking that teal golden acrylics. This is one of my favorite paint colors to use. It's just beautiful and it makes things really pop. And I'm going to combine that with some of the Lost Shadow Distress Paint. Yeah, even though I get the cells, I just wanted to play around. I mean, gel press printing is all about playing, right? Just having a good time, not worrying too much about the results. And you can see that because of that teal, I've got a nice solid kind of layer of paint there. So now I'm going to take that plate and flip it over onto my paper and I'm actually using cardstock today. Typically I just use copy paper when I'm making prints but because this was going to be really my focal layer and I really wanted to be able to distress it and, and do techniques to it, I didn't want to work with copy paper. I knew that I was going to be throwing embossing powder on it and whatnot so I really needed it to be strong. So I'm using um, X and Opaque 100 100 pound, 110, it'll be listed in my description box below um, because you're going to see that we're going to do a bunch of things to this cardstock later on. So I showed you how that print came out and now I'm going to make a second print. You could see a lot of paint was left. I'm really impatient when it comes to printing. I like to just pull my prints, you know, pretty quickly, which is why I often work with multiple plates at once. But for the sake of not being able to raise my camera any higher and zoom out any further, I wanted to make sure you guys would be able to see everything that I was doing. Look at how cool that roll-off print is. Isn't that nice? I, I'll wind up using that in projects in the future. 
Um, so I chose to not work on multiple plates here because I wanted you to just be able to focus on one thing at a time. Look at how nicely that texture looks in the plate now because I didn't use the distress paint. Um, again, this is not to throw you know any shade at distress paint. I love using it. It's just other paints tend to work a little bit better for me on my plates. And this could be for multiple reasons. I'm not really sure which ones they are, but um, this print comes out really cool. And this is what we're going to work on for our final card. I needed some depth. I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go, which is why I grabbed those other paint colors. But I wound up going with Iridescent Copper Fine, also from Golden, because man, it is just beautiful. And I, I didn't really want to go with the other colors. I wanted metallic. So that's the way I went. I thought it would create a nice patina when it's mixed with that teal. And it looks amazing in the end. So again, I'm grabbing that same piece of cardstock. You can see why having your plates on a piece of acrylic is super helpful. This one is from Stampendous. I believe it's still available from Spellbinders. If it is, I'll link it below. Last time I checked, it was on sale pretty inexpensively. So I'll, I'll link it if it's available. So here's a quick tip. I'm using my stamp glider pressure tool from Whimsical Wishes that my friend Glow got for me to help me press my print um, better because I have hand issues. So it's been really helpful to use it not just for stamping, but for pulling prints as well. So here you'll see that there's a lot of copper and teal left on the plate, but that winds up being the back layer. I should have used teal and copper again to pull this last print just to get the excess that remained on my plate. But I wasn't thinking that there was actually pink and yellow or butterscotch on the top. You'll see when I flip it over. Um, but, you know, it winds up just being a print I can use at a later date. I don't like wasting any of the, the good stuff that's on my plate. I love having grungy prints, and this is definitely a set of grungy prints. But you can see here that eh, it's a little tricky to see that stuff that was left over. But it's all good. I'm going to wind up using it eventually, probably stenciling on top of it as well. So... Here are my finished prints. I trimmed them down. I think they look super cool. I don't mind all of that white space that's there. I think it looks awesome. So now I'm trying to decide, do I want to go with the more teal print or the more pink print? And just trying to figure it out. I think that they both look great. I'm really happy with how they look. I think that using simple things like cardboard is just such a fun way to go. So before I decide, I grabbed the Entomology stamp set from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous and my distress, my edge distressing tool, excuse me, from Uniquely Creative. And that Entomology set, I, I just love it. It's so cool. I love stamping out those bugs and that big print in the background is just really rad. Um, I think it's, it's super cool. You'll see that I wound up using that text stamp on this card and it's just, it's just fabulous. Here I've got some brown cardstock and I'm using my shears from Uniquely Creative. I'll have them linked below to cut out um, that branch from the Everyday Foliage Collection uh, from Spellbinders. And I grabbed Cattail Copper Brown Lindy's Magicals. It's from the Autumn Leaves Collection and it's so pretty, you guys. Oh, I just love it. Got my fan brush here. I'm just gonna tap a little bit out onto my glass mat and then add some water to it with my Princeton Snap watercolor brush. Seriously, guys, you can use the cheapest brush in the world to do that. It doesn't matter. I just prefer my Princeton's. So I'm just adding a little bit of that shine to these leaves. Again, I use brown cardstock here and I just thought that adding that cattail copper brown would really look amazing, especially with the bits of metallic that are in the background of those gel press prints. And you can see that they're so pretty already. They're so, they look delicate. This is actually a pretty nicely made, I shouldn't say made, designed foliage where it looks dainty, but it's got enough to it where it's not like gonna just fall apart. It's not as flimsy as some other foliage dyes are that I've seen in the past. Um, I think that it's really a beautiful set. There's three in the set and I love all of them and I'm going to use the heck out of them. I hope you don't get tired of them because I, I'm kind of obsessed with them. They're beautiful. 
So now I'm doing a second one because I'm not sure if I'm going to do two cards today, if I'm going to do one at a time. I, I wasn't really sure while I was doing this, but I wanted to make sure that I had them both done because I knew that I really liked the look and, you know, I had my supplies out. So why not just do them both at once, right? So it looks like the cardstock is kind of getting super saturated, but it isn't. This is uh, a brown from Recollections from the Michaels collection. It's fine. It's like a 110 pound, I believe. Uh, not the greatest cardstock. It doesn't love water, but you could see that I'm not using so much that it's going to ruin the cardstock. Look at that shine, you guys. It's beautiful. So now I'm going to carefully put away the Lindy's Magicals and carefully cover my water so that I don't spill it everywhere. And we're going to move on to the next step. I'm letting those dry on the side because I don't need them for a little bit. So here I've decided that I'm going to use that pink panel. It's so cool. I'm so happy with that. And I'm trying to figure out, do I want to use two on here? Do I want to use just one? And I go back and forth, but ultimately the one is what I go with. So here's how you use that edge distressor. And you might remember this from way back in the day. Um, Heidi Swap, coincidentally, had something like this a long time ago. I still have my old one. It was well loved. <laughs> so now I've got a new one from Uniquely Creative. And essentially, there's a little tiny blade sticking out of where that like piece of pizza is cut out. And it tears up the edges really beautifully without you having to worry about nicking your fingers or getting your nails caught or anything like that. It makes a little bit of a mess, but you just sweep that away into the garbage and you're good to go. And you've got these really fantastic edges. So now I have that large text background stamp from the Entomology stamp set, and I've got my Lost Shadow Distress Oxide, and I'm stamping that whole thing. And when I have big stamps like this that are cling, Sometimes I just leave them on my glass mat and sometimes I pick them up and just stamp that way without, um, without a block or a stamping tool or anything. I find that when I'm doing like grungy mixed media things, I don't mind if the, if the large stamps are imperfect. It doesn't need to be because we've got a distressed look going on anyway. So it can be a bit of a mess and I'm good with that. So I'm just repeat stamping so that that whole panel is covered and then um, we're going to move on to, I believe I'm going to add another color on top of that at the next step. Doesn't that look cool already? It's just simple, fast, cool. I love the Lost Shadow color. That gray is just fantastic. It's such a good gray to work with. And I use it so much, so much. Like I can't even explain. You might be like, eh, it's just a light gray. It's not. It's so good. <laughs> So now I have Broken China Distress Oxide, and I'm not covering the entire stamp. So now you can see that I'm doing the stamping in a different way. I'm leaving the stamp directly on my glass mat and pushing the card base into it. So you can do whichever way you're comfortable with. I, I like to do both. It depends on the effect I'm going for. It depends on my mood. You do it however you like, but I think that this comes out really cool and just make some of the text pop and some of it recedes into the background and I, I just really like it. So now I'm just gonna clean off my stamp really well with some water and my stamp chamois and we're gonna put that away. Okay, so now this is a fun trick. Wax seals are like the thing right now, right? But I have a different way of doing it if you don't have the wax and you don't have the seals. This is Seasonings Embossing Enamel from Stampendous. Unfortunately, you can't get it anymore. But if you have a bunch of different embossing powders that have you know, some chunky and some fine and different colors, you can make your own mix that is super similar to this. This has a ton of metallics and some black in it. And what I do is I just pour it, I'm sorry that it's not super clear at the moment, um, I pour it right onto my card base, uh, not card base, my panel, excuse me, and I'm heating it up from below because we didn't use any Versamark here. So we don't want it to fly all over the place. And I've got that round postage stamp on a block and I'm just gonna push it right into that molten embossing enamel. You don't have to worry about it ruining your stamp. I would not do this with clear stamps, only do this with rubber, you guys. And then I'm going to pull it away and look at how cool that is. You have this great impression from that stamp. But I feel like I don't have enough 
powder on there. So I want to do it again. And you don't need to worry. You're not going to mess anything up. You're just going to wind up remelting all of that powder plus the extra that I just poured on there. And we can do the same thing again. So I'm just going to melt it from underneath because if I do it from the top, the heat gun is going to push all of that powder away. It's going to blow it everywhere. So we do it from below, push that stamp in, let it sit for a moment. Obviously, we want it to get a good impression. We don't want to burn ourselves or anything like that because it is a molten powder. And then take a look. Oh, I love this technique. And I love doing it with that particular stamp. That's an old Stampendous stamp from Andy Skinner. Unfortunately, that's not available anymore either. But there have been a lot of postage stamps out on the market lately. And I'm sure that you have something cool in your stash that you can use. It certainly doesn't need to be a postage stamp. It could be a heart, a star, whatever. It could just be cool texture. It doesn't really matter. It's just a funky effect. And now I just wanted a sprinkling of that powder up on top. So I added a little bit there and again, heating it from below until it starts to melt. And then I can bring my heat tool to the top. I needed a little bit more. I wanted it to be nice and, I don't know, full at the top and kind of fade to nothing. Look at that. Oh, this is some of my favorite embossing powder to work with. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Such a cool effect. So now I'm going to just get rid of this excess stuff um, in a moment. And now I'm making sure that I like how it looks, making sure that I have enough there and we can clean up the powder and save it for later. I have Danube Blue Fireworks Spray. This is a a colored spray with a mica base to it. So you shake it up and then you can spray it or flick it the way I am to create splatter. And it's just adding a little bit more to my background, making it look inky and more distressed. And like I said, at the very beginning, we're using a lot of products and doing a lot of techniques. Don't get overwhelmed. If this is not something that you want to do, it's like, ow, you're doing too much here. Like I can't it's too messy, too many things. Just pick a couple of things to do. You know, maybe maybe you want to use a cool background stamp with a couple of colors and then have some type of cute colored image on top and call it a day. Or maybe you want to try doing this sort of faux wax seal technique with some embossing powder, you know, and then keep the rest of your card pretty clean and simple. Pick and choose what techniques you want to do. But when you put them all together, oh, you can make some really cool stuff. Okay, so I wanted to add a little bit more color to that background, so I grabbed Chipped Sapphire Distress Ink, and I'm just using my Cottontail Blending Brush to add a little bit of color to the corners, keeping it heavier in the upper left and lower right, and adding just a little bit to the other two. Look at how cool that looks. I'm so happy with it. So now I've got a foam sheet from Michaels. It's brown. It's pretty close to the same color brown cardstock that I had used earlier, because I want to have that foliage dye popped up a bit. And I didn't want to necessarily cut like 15 of them to make them raised. So using the foam sheet is plenty. So now I've got my perfect match or so I think. <laughs> Take a look guys. I'm going <laughs> to, I can't believe I did this and didn't realize. So I'm adding barely arts glue to the piece of foam and everything is going all along fine. And here I am happily gluing, 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 and then putting that on and it's like, wait, what, what did I do? And that is the ASL sign for different. <laughs> so now I recut the correct die. You can see how pretty the other one is though, so that I have a perfect match now. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Anyway, I could just save it for another time. I just put it in the bag that I keep my dies and, you know, eventually I'll wind up using it. So I'm gluing that down and you can see I have easy dimension and it works out really well. You can, of course, use multiple layers of cardstock if you want to, but I, I just wanted to cut it once. So now I'm just fixing that little bit at the end because it's a little fiddly and making sure everything lines up as nicely as possible. I love how this is coming together, so fun. And this card can be used for whatever occasion you want. So now I have the Sending Sunshine Sentiments from Spellbinders, and I'm trying to decide which sentiment do I wanna use. There's so many good choices here, but eventually I decide to go with the Scenes Unfold, uh, Wishes Are Told, and I think that that's really cool. It's just a nice sentiment. I don't know, you can use it for all sorts of things. 
I grabbed Versafine Claire in Chianti, one of my favorite colors of Versafine Claire, and this is absolutely my favorite ink to use for sentiments because it's always so crisp. The colors are fantastic, and it's just a great ink. So I have a tiny little white strip there, and I'm stamping that down with my block. If you feel more comfortable, you can, of course, use a stamping platform, but I tend to just free stamp it with my, with my block and go with that. So I'm going to just wipe this baby off because I always do that. I wipe my stamps off right away so that I can put them back so that they don't get lost. And I have Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide now. I'm going to just trim this down with my tonic trimmer if I can move everything out of the way. I'm just lining that up so that I can get a nice edge. You can go in with a scissor if you want to, but I tend to just use my trimmer because inevitably, even though that strip is super small, I will cut it crooked and then I'll ruin the whole thing. <laughs> so now I'm just going to kind of rub the edges of that Distress Oxide on the sentiment strip, but I'm not going across the whole thing. I don't really want to make it super pink. I just want a little bit more because it was too white and perfect before. So now I'm just trying to figure out my placement and it fits really well. I'm happy with that. So now we're going to start gluing, 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 gluing all the layers down. Again, I've got the Barely Arts glue. I'm really happy with this glue. I think it holds securely. It goes on well. It dries quickly enough, but it allows you to have some movability if you need it. You can kind of fidget with things a bit if you need to. And now I'm just putting that giant acrylic block on top so that things will stay down while I'm gluing everything else. Adding some more glue to the back. This is the foam side, obviously, because we don't want to hide that beautiful shine we created with our Lindy's Magicals earlier. And now I'm going to just place that right there. And then I'm going to work with my strip. Now, again, that strip is on top of the cardstock that we tore up the edges. So it has a little bit of dimension. So I'm adding some more of the leftover strip that we trimmed off a couple of minutes ago to the back so that it's a little bit more even on both sides. It just raises that one side up a little bit just so that it meets the, it's not out of balance, right? Does that make sense? You can see what I'm doing. I, I hope I'm explaining that well enough. I didn't want to use foam because then it wouldn't be even with that top layer. So the cardstock brings it up just enough so that it is a little bit more flush. That's the word I was looking for. So now I'm adding some more glue. And this is totally the most exciting part of your day, I'm sure, watching me glue things. But, you know, it's important to leave in, right, so that you can see how I did everything. So what do you think of these techniques? Are these things that you've done before? Are these things that you haven't seen? Are you going to try any of them? I'd love to know what your thoughts are. So I needed some more shine because really, can you have too much? I don't think so. I grabbed some card bling from A Colorful Life Designs. I believe this is called Opalescent Cashmere. I'll have it linked below, of course. And I'm just using my jewel picker to kind of place some of these pieces around. And this is an arduous task for me no matter what. I, I don't know why I struggle with it. You know, you'd think that it for somebody that has worked with sequins for as long as I have, <laughs> it shouldn't be such a difficult thing. And I tend to go in threes and I know I want to have some type of triangle and kind of moving your eye around the card, but I don't know. I just struggle with it. Anyway, I've got on point glue. This is my preferred adhesive for when I'm working with sequins and rhinestones and gluing them to the top of my cards. I like to have my on point and my pokey tool in my right hand. And then I put my jewel picker in my left and I let the, obviously the jewel picker picks up the sequence and then the pokey tool helps put it down. But I don't have to keep flipping tools back and forth because I'm holding all of them at once and it makes it so much easier. That's the finished card, you guys. I love how this came out. There's hints of shine everywhere. There's texture, there's dimension. It's just really cool. And it's, it was so much fun to make. I love, I just love mixed media cards. I do. So I decided to throw in a bonus card. This uses the first gel print that I made at the beginning of the video. I did it exactly the same way, but with a few different products, but you can see that the layout is the same and it, it's just as beautiful as the first one, I think. So 
I used Kitsch Flamingo Distress Spray Stain for my splatter as opposed to the fireworks spray. And then I used Peacock Feathers Distressed Ink instead of Chip Sapphire because the Peacock Feathers worked better with this particular panel. And I used it on the sentiment as well. For the embossing enamel, instead of using the seasonings, this time I used, it's called Shabby Pink. Again, not available anymore. But if you've got multiple types of embossing enamels or embossing powders at home, you can totally make something like this yourself. Chunky white, some gold, a little bit of pink. You can throw some glitter in there and it just looks really fun. For my sequins, this time I used Opalescent Taffy, also from A Colorful Life Designs in their card bling collection. And I think that's pretty much it for the differences. Came out really cool, just like the other one. It's just got different colorations. Oh, so pretty. I'm, I'm loving these. I hope that you guys are too. Let me know in the comments what you think of these and, and if you plan on trying any of these techniques. That's it for me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some things and I hope you're inspired to get out a whole bunch of products and just play. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Be well, stay safe, peace out.